Nobody ever expected us to be in the finals. I'm sure you guys also never expected India to be ever be in the final. And we couldn't just believe it that we we're going to play against West Indies at Lords. And we were we were wondering whether we are dreaming or whether it's a real reality. Believe it or not, I'm not trying to say it now after say what today we are in 2001 and we we played this match in 1983, 18 years almost. And I can tell you, I can still relive those moments. I we could not believe that we were in the finals of the 1983 World Cup. On the eve of the World Cup, I still remember that time our board president was Mr. N. K. P. Salve, and the treasurer was late M. A. Chidambaram. They called us for a meeting and said. Dear guys, don't worry, just play a match against West Indies tomorrow. Whether you guys win or lose, the board is going to give you a bonus of 25,000 rupees per player. We were all wondering, 25,000 bucks? Because in 1983, 25,000 bucks was, okay, let me put it, I can't equate it directly, but if you want me to tell it in today's terms, it was like, you know, probably a couple of crores for each one of us. because. That time, our tour fee itself was only 5,000 or 10,000, I remember. And uh, 25,000 bucks, we never ever thought of that kind of money. And we just thanked them. And that was also a little bit of encouraging for us because they didn't expect us. They said, whether you win or lose, you're going to get the 25,000 rupees. And that probably gave us a lot of encouragement. And we all had our usual team meeting where we said, okay, we'll go out and do the best. The West Indies was in, okay, in full cry, full form. But still, for us, as I said, Everything to gain, nothing to lose. As usual, the English tabloids wrote us off in the final. They said the favorites were West Indies. Okay, granted, given, and uh, fine. It was, a, it was a dewy morning, I would say. You know, England is always dewy, slightly wet. But this particular morning on the June 25th, 1983, was slightly damp. And you know, there's a slight slope from the western side to the eastern side. And uh, Clive Lloyd, in any case, would have won the toss and put us into bat. But with this kind of damp condition, the climate conditions were absolutely perfect for bowlers like Garner and Roberts and Holding and Marshall. Clive Lloyd won the toss, put us into bat, and Garner gave us hell. James Carr is taking strike. He's wearing the protective uh, forearm gauntlet. And his batting partner will be Srikant, who's a real dasher. Sometimes manages to temper his aggression with a little caution, but not all that often. First runs from Miss Field. A few nerves out there this morning. Magnificent delivery. We'll have a look at the bounce here, and once again, that ball going through around about shoulder height to Gavaskar there, and uh, a very difficult delivery for him to play. Andy Vox. Oh, well done, that's beautifully bowled. Gavaskar has gone, the first wicket down, and Andy Roberts. In the middle of this great spell of bowling from uh, himself and Joel Garner has taken the first Indian wicket and that really is the one they wanted. Gavaskar, this great player, has gone with the total at two and it's first blood to Clive Lloyd's team. Well, this was outstanding bowling by Andy Roberts. Their line has been perfect and on this occasion there might just have been a little bit of movement down the slope there and a very faint nick from Gavaskar through to the keeper Dujon and all the West Indians in the air. Joel Garner is almost unbearable out there at the moment from a batting point of view. This ball too nipping back and bouncing and Shrikant doing very well there to glove that ball down square of the wicket could so easily have gone off his glove into this look cordon this really is an unbelievably good bowling by Joel Garner well 
that's safe enough. The ball's bouncing that much, you've got a real good chance of getting away with it, and Shrikan did just that. joy to the thousands who are here at Lord's. Got him away again, and that's a beautiful stroke. Picked it up, and round about leg stump. I suspect that was meant to be the quicker bouncer, but Shrikant was waiting for it, and gave it a fearful hammer behind square leg. Oh, what a shot. Didn't quite time it, but uh, he's got it away well enough. Larry Gomes is the fielder. Let's pick up three runs there to Armanath. Backers can't catch that. Four more to Shrikan. A little bit too short there from Joel Garner. Fine shot. Square on the offside. Well, the Indians are loving every moment of this. He's played this shot once before today, and once again, that slightly over-pitched delivery being played away to the boundary at point. Marco Marshall, the bowler. Oh, well played. Fine hook shot by Mohinder Amrat. Well, what a shot. That's the third time he's smashed this West Indian pace attack away to the square leg boundary. This was a quick ball. It was just on off stump, perhaps middle stump, and magnificently hooked. Michael Holding. Ball in the air, so nearly out. The luck's gone India's way. That's Logie there at backward of the square of the umpire. Clive Lloyd very keen on the fielder in that position. Almost got him right that time. In the air, middle of the bat, screams away in front of the pavilion, four runs. slow back but uh, pretty quick when he comes in Gomes that's out Marshall eventually fires one straight, wicket to wicket, and catches Shrikant playing across the line. So the second wicket falls. The wicket of Shrikant, the opening batsman. Just enterprising innings. India would have loved it to have lasted longer. Eventually undone by his own enterprise, I'm afraid. LBW for Marshall for 38, and India are now 59 for 2 in the 19th over. Oh, 
Oscar Sharma wanted that single a minute ago. This time he got it, but it was a close call. Yes, if you watch this carefully, you'll see there's a slight hesitation there. And off they go. to Jasper Sharma, placed it perfectly and just flipped it where he wanted it. And India increasing the rate, they've got it up to three and over now, which is not bad at all against this attack. Goes to resume. And similar sort of shot, similar sort of result, four more. Again, he moved his feet nicely, got into a perfect position to find that gap on the offside. Sharma to bring him a single. By nature, he is a good aggressive stroke player. He's uh, containing himself a little out there this morning. Knows the position of the side after those two wickets went down. It's taken him a little while to get into double figures, but he's on ten now. the wicket that West Indies wanted, Armanath goes for 26, clean bowl by Michael Holden, which leaves India on 90 for 3 in the 30th over. Yes, a tremendous blow for the West Indies, Armanath, who has looked a very, very high class player this morning, and this Bowl from wide of the crease, going down the hill and through the gap. Through the gate, and out goes the off stump. A polite little request of umpire bird there for LBW, but... Anybody can see where the wicketkeeper was going. And it swung again to big square leg. It's just a single. Sharma doing the trick but he's gone beautifully caught by substitute Logie out there tried to uh, copy the tactics there of Almanath but outside it tried to find that gap on the offside but succeeded only scanning it to a very deep backward point so something of a tragedy there for India to lose those two wickets in rapid succession 92 for four yes and Sharma moving away and trying to hit that one over extra cover actually getting an outside edge and it going high and safe into Gus Logie's hands couple of facing and that's what he wanted a quick single to get off the mark Beaten Logan this time, four runs. And Sandy Patel picking his short one up very quickly. 
and getting into a super position to pull that. Short on the offside, backed off the back foot this time. But uh, they'll be happy with the single because that brings up the 100 for India. Hundred on the board, four men out, six now to Patel. Larry Games has bowled very well for West Indies here. And having said that, he's just given away four runs with a rank long hop. Is the danger time for West Indies where Gomes and Richards have to bowl out 12 overs between them. A couple Dervis taking strike. And again, and this is where India have to try and take charge. And have 12 overs in all in which to do it before the quick bowlers come back. That goes to 15. Immediate memories of that marvellous 174 he hit against Zimbabwe. And this time, not waiting for the chance to pick the gap. He's hit it straight down long on his throat. And that is a tragedy as far as India are concerned. They've been trying to get after Larry Gomes, and Gomes, with his well-flighted deliveries, has picked up the vital wicket after lunch of the Indian captain. Caught right away down at long on. to the man behind square leg. Andy Roberts has struck Joel Garner, has taken a very good catch away to his right-hand side. Curdy is out, is out without scoring, and India now are six down and in awful trouble. I think this is a certainly a big blow for India. Two quick wickets. This one, the full shot again attempted by the Indians, and this time hit straight to Joel Garner, who was perfectly placed there just behind square. Uh, six. Not a very long boundary out there, but a beautifully struck ball by Sandeep Patil. Well, this is an example of what I was saying. That ball, probably pretty straight, but dispatched away to square leg, to the short boundary of square leg for six. two third men and uh, between them they saved the boundary. The holding is uh, one of them played back as the other down there behind the line of point. Three to Sandeep Patil there. Was going on to 136. And well, he's gone. Roger Binney straight to Joel Garner, who's having a pretty good day here. Bowled superbly this morning and uh, already has two catches to his credit. That one at mid wicket. Just a direct little push from Roger Binney out to the big man. It's a good uh, delivery that's directed in at Vinny's body. He's got himself just a little bit too far across and underneath the ball. And uh, once again, Joel Garner not having to move an inch to take that catch. 33 for 7, and will they continue to have a go at Larry Gomes and his little off spitters? That 
the answer to that is uh, double yes. Six more. Martin Lull this time. And smash Gomes away over mid-wicket. Got a very good ball this one, very short. Martin Lull playing a good shot there, getting back very quickly. And uh, he certainly hit that in the middle of the bat because it went back quite a long way. It was a short boundary down there at uh, square leg, but that was a bad ball. And uh, all heads in the air as that one flies over the boundary for six. Hundred and fifty up for India. And forty one overs almost bold. at uh, mid-on and Joel Garner deserved a wicket he bowled so well this morning without any result and here now Sondi Patil has gone for 27 India 153 for 8 and it looks to me that they're about to commit the greatest sin in limited overs cricket to be bowled out in fewer than their available 60 overs they're only in the 42nd over now and they're 8 wickets down Slightly short. Suddenly Patel just a little bit optimistic, optimistic there, trying to pull that away. And uh, the ball hitting the splice of a bat and going straight down the ground to mid-on. Larry Gomes making no mistake. They want two. No, I'll feel it. Bacchus is the man at deep backward square leg. stuff went back some pretty fiery bowling out there and uh, those West Indians loving every second of it that really was a bit of their magical pace as they would say and uh, Madden Lull out bowled with a quick ball from a very accurate Malcolm Marshall have a look at the ball here beating the outside edge of the bat but he did pick it up just a little bit high and had to rush the down swing there and out went the middle stump It beats the field. It gets them all the way, so that must have had some power tucked away in it. Ooh, what nasty ball. And that struck him on the helmet. That hit Sandu well on the helmet. I really don't know. The old bouncer at number 11. I, I can't think that's the right way to play this game of cricket. It's a good bouncer, but uh, he wouldn't be going in number 11 if he could bounce. Stuck and Sandu stands his ground and strokes that one away wide of mid on. Hold him. It 
it's all over, that's the end. Fine fighting innings by Syed Kamani. Ends goal by holding for 14. It was agony prolonged in the end by these two very gallant batsmen. Sandhu, who is 11 not out. Kamani, 14. As you all saw, we were all out for 183. Just imagine getting all out for 183 in the finals of a World Cup and that too against West Indies. We went back to the dressing room and we were quite sad and in fact the mood in the dressing room was slightly dull because we all thought, oh, what an opportunity, we had messed it up. It's not that, you know, uh, we thought, okay, we didn't mind losing, but we thought, come on, this is not the way to lose and, you know, we are feeling a bit bad. Uh, we thought we should have put up a little more of a bit of a, what they call fight, that's what we were wondering. And you know, a lot of people, I remember when we had lunch and all those things, some of the, what they call English, uh, English men, other people are saying, come on, it should have been, if England had come to the final, at least the final would have been more interesting, or if Australia would have come to the final, things would have been more interesting. You know, these kind of talks were going around in the dressing room and when we had lunch rooms and all those things. We couldn't bear it, but then, fine, we had to take it up. And uh, so when we were about to go into field, Kapil Dev just called us for a small meeting and said, Kapil said, Okay, guys, we messed up a lovely chance of doing well in the 1983 World Cup, if not winning the 1983 World Cup. But let's not give in easily. 183, let's make the West Indian batsmen work for it. And let's not give in easily. Even then, you won't believe. He never said, do well and we'll try and win the cup. He just said, don't give it up easily. Let's just fight it out. And that is the frame of mind. We walked into the field and against West Indies in the 1983 World Cup final. So good to Greenwich to face couple there. Nice little outs, will you? New ball moved around a little bit here this morning. Pitch of the ball, opens his account with a lovely cover drive. Very enthusiastic crowd, as you'd imagine here. And a few late plane loads arrived from Bombay earlier this morning. And uh, plenty of West Indies support, as there always is in the capital city. So Green gets away, thickish outside edge, but well controlled. Side for uh, Sandu. And he's bowling. All over the place. No play to shot. Thought it was going to swing down the hill. It uh, held its course and came up. And Greenwich has gone. And well, that's a fine early breakthrough for India. Disposing of Gordon Greenwich for a single with only five runs on the board. Greenwich's experience. And this one uh, looking as though it's going down the hill and cutting back up quite sharply. Short, hooked away powerfully, four runs, no problem at all. play at that. The outswing caught the outside edge. A 
to Dave. Now to Richards. Just leaned into that stroke to pass mid off to four. And uh, Richards really does make this batting look awfully easy. Superb stroke, this. Beautifully timed. He's not really running. He knows it's going for four. Cheeky shot. Took that uh, for him about middle. But uh, another typical uh, Richard stroke. Beautifully wide a middle. Glorious stroke again. Just about to go over the ropes. So we've already seen off drives, pulls, hooks, and now a great on drive. With Richards strokes all around the wicket. Um, let's have some more. One for extra cover. Just by way of a change. Two absolutely superb strokes by Ed Richards. Batting at its best. Richard took Lords, always so impressive. 138 went out in the 79 the Pro final here. 117 in the Gillette final against Northampton the same year. 132 went out against Surrey. And full of strokes like this. That's a better length. Still able to pinch the single. So the 50 comes up. 31 of those to Richards, 13 to Village, in the 12th over. And he's gone. Haynes has been struggling there, tried to hit that on the up, never quite there for the drive. And very nicely caught at short extra. Oh, a great problem there for Roger Binney. And the second wicket goes down with 50 on the board. Haynes goes for 13. A half volley. He got well on his front foot and didn't really time it and just lobbed it gently to Binney at cover point. And <coughs> disposed of the openers. And uh, here's a welcome sight to West Indian supporters and to uh, very many members here at Lords. They're rising on their feet to pay their tribute and acclaim to Clive Lloyd. So, what a formidable combination out there now. Lloyd and Richards. Quickly underway. Clive, there, captain at West Indies, all times in Test cricket, 
Only on the West Indian. That's his uh, one day international. Average is 37. I rather think that uh, his average in test cricket is better. And uh, looks as though he's in a bit of trouble. He scampered that quick single. It looks something around the groin there. Is uh, a little pull in there. He's obviously pulled a muscle and uh, on his way out to the centre. A runner. And it looks like Desmond Haynes. A shot. Not so good. Beautifully caught. He hit that away to within 15 yards of the boundary. And the Indian skipper has done a tremendous job to get back there. Marvellous running catch. And Richards has gone for 33. He was charging through, calling Desmond Haynes for two. But didn't quite get it. It would have landed 10 to 15 yards inside the boundary, and Kapil Dev had a long way, to, long way to go to make his ground. And what a great blow for India. Viv Richards looking in tremendous form there. seen quite a big deflection and no mistake by Gavaskar at first look. And that will make a few hearts beat faster in both dressing rooms. There are a few discussions going on in the middle between the various players out on the ground. Roger Biddy, the bowler. He's gone! Caught Lloyd! Couple dead, the skipper. Extra cover. Lloyd is caught. 66 for five, and West Indies in total disarray now. And India had struck with almost nothing to bowl at. 183 their total. And now the world champion, 66 for five. Well, Lloyd going for the big drive here. The ball wasn't quite there. It was a long way away from him. Hit the base of the bat and went straight to the Indian captain. Capital Dev, an extra cover there, taking the catch. And Clive Lloyd disappears off the ground at Lords. runs from it, but it was uh, for a pickish outside edge. Two more to Fayette Backus, takes him on to three. Oh, oh good throw! Brilliant throw! What a tough decision. He's in good position, Harold Bird. But what a tough decision that was. Well, there was a collision. It looked to me as if the batsman was short of the crease. And his efforts to get around the bowler down that end, but what a great bit of fielding. Shri Kent's coming in there very quickly. 
picking it up and we'll be able to tell from here. Looks to me as if uh, he might have just been short of the line there, but indeed was. Just need to strike that by Jeffrey Dujon. Uh, it's 73 for five here with Dujon on two and Bacchus on five. And there's the mini selection committee. Great view of Sandu to Bacchus. Reaches, Nicks, he's called, he's out. Saif Kamani is the catcher. Jubilation among the Indian fielders. So Bacchus is caught, Kurvani, Bolsandu for eight. And what a magnificent catch this was. Bacchus reaching at that ball, very wide, big edge, and have a look at those gloves. They were really very wide, the catch taken in front of the Devasta. And so Bacchus out, caught off the bowling of Sandu for eight. Yashpal Sharma, the fielder. Jeffrey Dijon sprinting home. Dujon is very quick, and that was a good uh, single bat. Well judged. Both of them set off very quickly. Short. Six runs. A low flat six. The square leg. Not a good ball. Pulled down by Sandu. A dreadful delivery this. A real long hop. But there's the skipper, the Indian skipper, Kapil Dev. He's dropped back onto that deep square leg boundary. Perhaps Sandu to drop a short one deliberately. Or just there for the accident. And yes, West Indies played that well because where Kapil Dev was, so they pushed the single and brought up the hundred. Six wickets down for the hundred in the 34th over. Coming in what fault there, that was quite a good return coming in from the covers. And never quite got into position. the same all the way through. And there's some uh, cheeky singles being taken and not times when I do risky ones. Dujon on 25 to face. And he's pulled it on. And he's worked the miracle for India. That's the wicket they desperately needed. Dujon, somewhat unlucky there. Tried to pull the bat out the way, I fancy. Just caught the uh, inside edge and pulled it on. So he goes. 119 now for seven in the 42nd over. 
Well, funny things happen at this game. Starts to play, decides it's too wide, tries to get his bat out of the way, hits the bottom edge, and into his stumps. And great blow for the West Indies. Dujon played very, very well indeed. Looks as though he will be a very good player in the making. But with this game thrown wide open again. And, uh, the trick nearly worked. Moved it down the hill, caught the outside edge. Roberts gets a single. And the edge just thick enough for it not quite to carry. But a tremendously tight contest. He's edged it this time and he's gone beautifully caught by the Vasquez slip. And that might well be the final nail in the coffin here for West Indies. Malcolm Rice, who's defended stoutly for a long, long time, falls another victim to Armina for 18, leaving West Indies 124 for 8. I think if we have another look at that, we'll see that was pretty wide as well. So they've chased these wide ones, the West Indian batsman. And Sunil Gavaskar making his name as a catcher. Hard time, couple days, uh, thinking, trying to work out some of the batsman's mind, changing this field. Took to run quite fast the ball, but it's plenty of time to push it through mid wicket for two runs. And uh, if Andy should pull this off, they're going to be over the top, close the play. That's out. Yes. Couple there finally gets his just desserts. Andy Roberts falls LBW. No doubt at all in Barry Mayer's mind. He went for four, one, 26 for nine. And India almost there. I think he had that little bit of movement. Uh, Charmanath has conjured up the whole of his spell. Struck the uh, outside edge. And again, some slight changes on the offside there this time. Tabasco then out of slip into gully. His batsman looking uh, quite comfortable at the moment. Uh, they're particularly getting on the front foot to everything. Tremendous performance by this Indian side. And 
here's a man who's been largely responsible for it over the last two weeks. Skipped the side quite beautifully and made his own contributions with bat and ball. And this provincial trophy, thoroughly deserved. something of a suspicion here that it'll go to Armanath, indeed it has one of the match awards to Mahinda Armanath for the uh, second time running collected it in the semi-final 600 pounds goes to uh, Mahinda Armanath who runs at number three and is three late wickets Careful it has been a quite tremendous day, an historic day for Indian cricket. It must be the proudest day in your cricketing life. That's right. I'm very happy. I'm happy what my team done here today. Okay. Now, they're looking at you back home from Bombay to Calcutta. What do you want to say to all your countrymen beyond being happy? Come here. Uh, we want to come here again next time with the same spirit and we we'll, should do it next time as well. Clive, as losing captain, what is your reaction to what has been an unexpected and absorbing contest? Yeah, people, a lot of people might think so, but I thought that we, they played very well. Um, we didn't, we didn't matter. We bowled pretty well. I mean, if you restrict the side to 184, you expect to be there or thereabouts. But, um, you know, we didn't, we didn't match well at all. The, the, the innings, there were so many ups and downs, weren't there? It looked as if Viv Richards was going to take it away from you about 50 for one and he was going like a tank wasn't he captain yeah i think he went too fast and we were happy when he was playing too fast and we can we were thinking he can give us a wicket anytime if he keep on playing like that because he's, he wasn't playing for 60 overs he was playing for 30 overs game right so a target wasn't good enough to fight but we were just looking for a couple of wickets to come back to the game. Capo, what is going to happen in the Indian party tonight? Big celebrations for you both? Well, this is okay, then they'll never come like so easy. Yes, we are going to celebrate. Drinks on the house, you can join us. We have and we played like a winner throughout the game, throughout the series. Everybody fight, fight for their life and they said, we will do it. And you must both be in agreement that the man of the match should be none other than well, Rohinda Amanath. Well thanks, played. Thanks, Peter. Everybody was so impressed with the way you played the fast bowling when you were batting. And then, of course, these two crucial wickets. What do you want to say about the day? Uh, actually, you know, that was the time actually we wanted a breakthrough. And when I got the first one, I think it was very good for the team. Because like Andy and Michael to fall and the wicket was swimming about. So then, my, then uh, Marshall got out, so we were very much in the game at that time. Is your father over here or will he be looking at you? Uh, no, I think he's very much at home, so he must have been watching on the TV over there. Another great name. As you all saw, it was a great victory for us. As I said, probably the greatest moment in Indian cricket so far. We just couldn't believe that we had won the World Cup 1983. And that particular feeling, I tell you, my viewers, is something that cannot be expressed. It has to be experienced. I remember it was total chaos in the dressing room after the victory. And so many people coming to us and congratulating us. And I remember we got calls from our, that time Prime Minister, late Mrs. Gandhi. You know, in the, in the English dressing rooms, you have the facility of the telephones in the dressing room itself. We got a call from the PMO's office congratulating us. We got a call from the President that time, late Zail Singh. And we got all kinds of calls and all kinds of people coming congratulating us. I still remember there were a group of Indians who followed us from right from match number one at Manchester. All through, there were 10, 15 Indians carrying the Indian flag. They were there, and I tell you, it was amazing. We went back to the uh, hotel. There was total Bangra dance going on. The I, st I still remember the name of the hotel, Westmoreland Lobby. It was full of Bangra dance, a lot of surdies, and I tell you, it was an ex extraordinary feeling. We came back to India, and the next two weeks in India was only fully celebrations. Uh, our late Prime Minister, Mrs. Gandhi, hosted as parties. Our pr president, that time, Mr. Zail Singh, hosted as party. Then there were a lot of chief ministers, a lot of people hosting us parties. And you won't believe, there were so many gifts and prizes announced, at least in the press and the media. And I wish all of us, the players who played in the 1983 World Cup, if we had got those gifts and prizes, even 5% of that, we would have probably been millionaires. That's the kind of announcement made that time. But it was a magic feeling. Winning 1983 World Cup is probably the greatest moment in Indian cricket. And personally for me, it is obviously and definitely the greatest moment.